With season one of year five, Broken Wings announced to be going live on Thursday the 8th of June, you have just over one week to get ready. Today I want to show you a few things you could do now to prepare for season one. Hi everyone, welcome back. So today we're going to go over some of the things that I would do to prepare for season one of year five. This applies to pretty much every single season. Um, and you may have seen this stuff before. This, this For some of you, this will be common sense, but for some of you, this might not be. And I'd I recommend you just do these couple of things, and that way you're kind of ahead of the rest who don't do it. Please exclude, excuse the, the yellow gloves there. I realise just how luminescent they are <laughs> looking at this now. But the first thing, guys, is uh, Countdown. So um, Countdown for me has been a real revelation in this game because it offers so much in terms of loot. So one of the things that I would highly recommend you do is go into Countdown and just play a lot of Countdown. Get a lot of loot um, and then obviously you can either deconstruct that loot for um, obviously your weaves and whatnot so that you can use it for crafting etc and other stuff, um, recalibration and whatnot. Of course as well with that loot you could just sell it and get as much credits as possible um, so that you can purchase stuff because obviously when the update goes live next week I imagine there'll be a vendor reset maybe on the Tuesday there might even be a vendor reset on the Thursday I'm not sure um, and that way there might be some new stuff in there for you to pick up so it's always good to have I think most of you will probably have enough credits anyway but just to make sure the other thing of course is you're able to get the currency here which makes you pick up you can pick up you know your optimization caches Exotic caches, etc., which are exotic caches for me are the things that I always buy. Now, I don't know if because I remember one season where you were able to purchase exotic caches prior to the season going live, and those exotic caches, when that season went live, would actually drop new exotics. I don't know if that will happen with season one of year five. Just to be on the safe side, I'd recommend purchasing some exotic caches, guys. Why not? Because even if it doesn't, then one of the other things that you're going to do, of course, is you're just going to deconstruct these, or you're going to open them first, deconstruct them, and get the exotic components, which, again, are going to be very, very important, of course. So definitely go into Countdown, because Countdown is the best, I would say, probably the best mode in the game, the best activity in the game for you to get as much um, loot as possible, and with that loot, you get currency, all that sort of stuff. So, speaking of exotic components, and before you all roast me in the comments for only being Expertise 8, yes, unfortunately, I don't play this game as much as I would like to. I simply don't get the time anymore. Uh, with a new family and whatnot, yeah, my, my attention is, is pretty much away from this game uh, most of the time. And when I get a chance, then I'm not really looking to do Expertise. I'm kind of doing other stuff. Playing Countdown, mainly, because I really enjoy that mode. But, Expertise level... Um, obviously some of you guys are going to be proficient. You're going to be at expertise, I think it's what, 21 I think it's up to now. Uh, with a new season, with new items being added, I believe the expertise level is going to be going up to uh, level 22 or level 23. I can't remember which one it is. It's going to be going up. So if you are max expertise, then you will not be at max ex expertise with season one of year five. So if you don't have any exotic components, then you are going to need those exotic components because, of course, once you've got those new items up um, to proficient, then you are going to need to invest a lot of materials and exotic components to get that up to the new expertise level. And of course, as I said before, um, you can obviously spend the uh, countdown currencies on stuff to help with that. Moving on, the other thing, stash. Okay, stash. So I don't know how many of, how many of you have 300 and out of 300 in your stash I imagine it's quite a lot of you every now and then I would always go in here and just get rid of stuff because uh, most of the time um, a lot of the stuff in your stash you're never going to touch it's going to be like let's have a quick look and see what I've got in here that I probably will never touch but I've got it just because it's I want it I don't I, don't, I think I've even got a doctor home on my character so I don't think I even need that I'm pretty sure I've got a king breaker on my um, character but so I don't really know why I've got that. There's a lot of stuff here. The Slayer, I mean, that's more of a sentimental thing rather than anything else. I've got two dares here. Don't know why, but I do. And I imagine for a lot of you guys, there'll be so many, so much stuff here that you simply don't need or will never use. And you're probably doing that because you're thinking, well, maybe in a future update, this item or you know this 
this helmet here might be meta, so I'll keep it. You can pick this stuff up. With targeted loot in the game, you can pick this stuff up easily. So I'd highly recommend you go into your stash and you just start getting rid of stuff. My character has 103 on it at the moment. Pretty sure I don't need 103. See, I've got two Doctor Homes. Um, pretty sure you don't need... I've got another King Breaker and another King Breaker. So you, you just don't need that many items. And I'd highly recommend you go in and just purge that stuff. Um, and just so that when you the new stuff comes into the game, you know, you've just got a much cleaner stash. I'd always recommend you clean your stash every now and then anyway. Moving on, let's go to a really important one, actually. So you guys have probably already seen this farm a million times, but for anyone who hasn't, uh, well, I say farm, this is the best place to probably get all your materials. This is the solar farm. Um, so if you're after all your, you know, your normal materials like titanium and all that stuff... There is so much here, ceramics, electronics. There, there are so many crates here, guys, that, yeah, I mean, I could be here for a good 10 minutes going through each and every single one. What I'll do is I'll just, I'll quickly go through a few so you guys can see, uh, but there are so many here, and this is one of the best places that you're going to come to in order to um, pick up all of these, um, these kind of materials that you're really going to, they're all down the sides, by the way, guys, all down the sides on each side. Where you're really going to um, need those materials in order to, you know, craft or, or whatever it is you want to do with um, with the next season, because it's always better to be prepared, right? It's always better just to get all the get all your stuff ready, so that when the season comes along, you know, you've got plenty of materials and stuff, so you don't have to worry about going to these farms later on. You can kind of just hit the ground running and know that you are pretty much fully stocked up. Plus, you're going to need these for projects, and you can see, guys, there's there's so many here. Um, and I've missed a few definitely here, um, but I'm just quickly running through so you guys can see what I mean. But they are literally all over the place. They go all the way up. Oh, there's one up there you can see at the back over there. They go all the, all the way down this uh, down this side here as well. So the solar farm is well known for being like the best place to kind of just go to pick up all of the uh, all of these kind of materials. It's one of those things that if you play regularly, especially daily. Um, and obviously you're using those materials often, then you're probably just going to be popping here almost every single day to pick up um, the materials because you're going to need them. And you're going to use them. I think there's one down there as well, just on that thing here. But there's, they're all down the sides of here as well. You can just see. Sometimes what you could do is you could obviously donate to... Uh, you could take the control point and donate and make sure that these crates you know, stand out better for you. Uh, that might work, uh, obviously, because you'll get the, uh, the radius kick in. Uh, but as you can see, guys, I've picked up so much here. And this is not This is me just quickly running through. I'm, I'm sure I've, I think there's a crate there. I'm sure I've missed some here. But there's there's so much here, guys. You, honestly, the best farm that you're going to get in terms of just coming in, getting materials as soon as possible um, so that you're prepared for Season 1. So, yeah, this is definitely number... I would say this is probably number one on my list of things to do in preparation for every new season. Not just Season 1 of Year 5, but every new season, um, as I said, so that you can get the... Uh, Hit the ground running as soon as the uh, season goes live. So there's really not much more that you need to do. There is a way for you to... You could create a new character um, and run through Worlds of New York. And, you know, you could rank up your shade levels and then get all the resources from that. That's one way of getting all your resources in. There's plenty of ways to get the resources like printer filament um, and all that sort of stuff. Field recon. Uh, I think the uh, leveling up the character is definitely the best way of doing that. You just got to make sure you uh, purchase the blueprint in order to share resources between characters. And that will be able to get up there really quick. Other things that you may, or especially if you're quite new, uh, I'd highly recommend you get into a clan if you haven't already. And that way it's because it opens a clan vendor, also opens up a weekly cash. Um, and quite often, depends what clan you're in, quite often you might get uh, a gold uh, clan cash. And that way you're going to get more items once the, uh, the update goes live and, and more chance then of getting the new stuff so overall i mean there's not a lot there's not a ton you need to do it's not like other games where you could you know say for example destiny where you could save up bounties and all of that sort of stuff really which you could use towards xp for the seasons the only other thing that i would highly recommend you do guys but i'll probably end up making a video on this anyway is there will be a meta way to run the next season in terms of xp what that is at this stage i don't yet know but i there will probably be some kind of person who goes crazy and figures it all out day one of the new season and when they do i'll bring it to you guys uh, and once you do then you'll know the most efficient way to get your season level up to 100 if that's what you want to achieve if you want to get to level 100 as soon as possible then that will be possible that's it guys that's it for today hopefully you enjoyed this one um drop a like down below if you did until the next one epic out